Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Cataclysm. My name is Vormithrax, and we're going to play some more Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, firing up a brand new challenge. So we finished up our Mega City Motorcycle Challenge on Wednesday, so it's time to do a new one. And uh, I've got the new one up right now in chat. As always, you can use the challenge settings and mod list commands to see what we're doing. Uh, this one's going to be the Silent Sniper 10K Challenge. I'm going to play as a young archery savant who's fled the riots and has taken the nickname 10K in honor of his zombie kill count goal. With double zombie spawns, half item spawns, and four times faster evolution, uh, can 10k live up to his name before the Cataclysm claims him? We're going to find out. <laughs> so, as mentioned in the world settings uh, there, I've doubled the zombie spawns, half item spawns, and evolution is set to 1.0. Default is 4.0. The lower it is, the faster the zombies evolve in the new forms. Uh, and then the rest is pretty generic for what I usually run. So wander spawns turned on, static NPCs on, but no starting NPC, and the typical MSX dead people tile set and RF, RRF sounds. Um, mod list, pretty much same as I always run. I didn't make any major changes there. So that's pretty much where we're at. And I've got the character I plan on playing up on the screen right now. I wanted to talk a bit about him and uh, see if anybody had comments before I jumped into the game and found out what kind of map we're going to get. Uh, with the Fled the Riots scenario, we've got quite a few choices of starting location. So we'll take a look at that in just a second. That's pretty much the last major choice to take a look at, is that starting location. Now we're going to be in a town, and it's going to be during the daytime with double zombie spawns. So, <laughs> the first, oh, five minutes might be restarting a few times. Uh, it's always a big crapshoot when I do this with the... Uh, more zombies, higher evolution, in the city start, in the daylight, so we'll see. Uh, I think I've got them set up where I've made them about as survivable as I can right at the start. Uh, it's pretty much my typical traits that I go with for high mobility, and combined with the archery, I think will work pretty well. So we've got fleet-footed, parkour, and quick, as well as indefatigable for the higher stamina, so we can run for longer and get away from things. Uh, I'm hoping that will allow me to outpace and uh, shoot down the various zombies that I need to. Um, we've also combined night vision with a starting perception of 12, so that's going to give us 6 night vision range, and I'm hoping that's enough that I'll be able to actually use the bow effectively uh, at night. I think six range, we might be able to take shots before they detect me at that range, so I think I'll be able to actually be sniping things silently. Um, that's kind of his moniker, Silent Sniper. 10K is our goal in our nickname, so I'm going to call the scenario or the challenge a success if we can get to a 10,000 body kill count um, before the Cataclysm claims us. So, as always, surviving the initial onslaught the first two or three days is the hardest part. Once you start getting established, get a vehicle, get some gear, it gets a little easier, and you pretty much have to put yourself into dangerous situations. But 10K is a pretty big number. Um, I'm both going to see if I can hit 10K and also how quickly I can hit 10K, assuming we survive uh, the initial setup. So, uh, two times... Uh, Zombie count during the daytime in a city start is going to be interesting. So it's going to depend a lot on where it puts us in the city. So I might pick a starting building that I suspect is going to be towards the outside edge of the city. I didn't change the default settings other than uh, those things I've already mentioned. So we've just got the city size and spacing of four as usual. So it's not going to be a mega city or anything like that. So we'll see. Yeah, I didn't know, uh, since the archery changes, I, the big changes that are, I don't remember, a few months ago, I've done very little archery, so I don't know <laughs> the strength requirements on a lot of the uh, the new bows. I was pretty sure 8 would at least get me with a starting bow, and uh, we'll kind of adjust from there if we can. Uh, if we need to get stronger, we'll see if we can find a way of getting stronger. But uh, I wanted to focus on stats that I don't usually raise too much for this particular run. I try to find different ways of mixing things up. So we're going to go with a high dex and high perception run as opposed to a high strength and high intelligence run. Uh, usually I don't go above 9 perception and dex. I don't fiddle with much either generally. But I wanted to try this out, see just how effective things were. Uh, starting with a compound bow, having archery skill 6, and uh, dex and perception are both very important for the bow as well. So we're going to see how it goes. Um, I think the big problem I'm going to have is I'm not going to want to fire my carbon fiber arrows at things I'm not going to be able to recover them from. <laughs> so if I'm just trying to run away from things, uh, firing my compound or my carbon arrows at things that I'm not going to be able to go get the arrow back is going to be rough. So we'll see. Um... 
So we'll adjust as we can. Uh, there are ways to raise strength. So I'm not running stats through skills or anything like that, but uh, we can hunt down a uh, plus two strength CBM and go strength mutations and all that kind of stuff. So best bow is 12 strength. No, nah, I thought the best bow was 18 strength. Isn't the compound great bow or some silly thing at like 18 strength? <laughs> now, I don't know if that's best, quote unquote. Like I said, I haven't really done bows much since they did the big overhaul. Uh, so part of this is actually reacquainting myself with the uh, bow choices and uh, arrows. So we'll see what we can find. I'm not restricting myself to only using the bow. That's going to be our primary method because that's what we're going to be best at and we'll have the most advantages for. But uh, perfectly fine to use a knife and other things. I'm going to try to keep it to just a few select weapon types, though. Uh, I'd like a knife and maybe a blunt weapon of some kind, but that's about it. Other thing to note in my traits is the savant trait. That's going to be a pretty major one. If you're not familiar with it, I don't play with it too often, but it's a pretty game-changing thing that you got to really be aware of. So it costs four points, which is fairly high. Um, and it, mentions, or it reads in the description, you tend to specialize in one skill and be poor at all others. You advance at half speed in all skills except your best one. Make note that combining this with fast learner will come out to a slower learning rate of learning all skills. I didn't do that, so I didn't pair it with anything. But uh, yeah, so archery, we're going to be great at. We're an archery savant, and everything else is going to be pretty slow for us to raise. We do have a decent intelligence, so that'll help a little bit. But uh, everything else, I I'm not sure exactly how slow it's going to be. We'll see just about <laughs> how bad it gets. All right, so yeah, I'm hoping that my uh, skills and my, uh, not really the, well, the traits, the decks and the perception are going to help me more than having a higher strength. We'll, we'll see. Um, if I'm hitting every single time at medium range, I'd prefer that to the long range. Although the goal is to kill things like shockers outside the range they can... Uh, zap me at so we'll see it'll take some adjustment and some planning uh i didn't take anything else though all i took was archery not a single other point spent in any of these so there we go we are the archery savant silent sniper called 10k and i think we're all set except for let's talk about this so here's my list religious cemetery is kind of the one that if i want to be out of the city that's the one to take i think it's almost always on the outer edge of the city Church, eh, could be just about anywhere. Same with police station, <laughs> the mall food court. <laughs> uh, well, that'd be interesting with a 2.0 zombie spawn start. <laughs> that'd be like standing room only inside the mall. I uh, wonder how many brutes and hulks and such I would get with the four times evolution as well. Hmm, at least I'm not... Uh, Fled the Riots, I don't... Uh, crap, is Fled the Riots a late timer start? I can't remember. I don't think it is. Uh, no, it doesn't mention anything about, uh, late time. So, it's not next summer or anything like that. Uh, hospital, no way. Bookstore, library. Uh, another thing I need to check. So I start with cargo pants. Quiver, flannel jacket. So the jacket and the cargo pants are going to give me a little bit of carry capacity. I'll end up wearing the bow. I'm not sure what else is going to give me any. So we'll have a little bit of carry capacity. That's actually going to make a difference in what I choose here. So, hey there, Andrathi. Yep, we are just starting out. I am on the character creation screen. Brand new series. Um, so, everything else is pretty hit or miss. Like I said, I think Religious Cemetery is the best way to try to guarantee I start on the outside edge of the town. But... There's going to be nothing really useful there other than maybe a car parked out in the uh, front of it. Uh, beyond that, there's no usefulness. But if I pick any of these other ones, I'm almost guaranteed to be right in the middle of it, in the thick of things, with a massive amount of zombies. So, I also have the, the poor healer trait. It's not the worst one. This is the 30% lower than normal healer. Uh, so that is going to affect me as well. So we're a poor healing savant. Um... Nah, I didn't want to do the Wilderness Start. <laughs> I looked at the Wilderness Start for the Bow Hunter, and I've, I've done that one, and too many times when I start my stream, I end up starting it, traveling like five map sections, and not finding even a road. <laughs> so I spend like two hours just walking through the woods, and I hate that, so I don't want to do the Wilderness Start. <laughs> uh, it's too boring, too random possibility on the World Gen, and it just always screws with me, so 
Sorry, no world, no wilderness starts unless I come up with a specific theme that'll do it. <laughs> but man, I had some really ugly live stream maps once, that, or a couple of times actually, that were just messing with me. All right, so I think for this first attempt, we may, like I said, die pretty quickly. Um, grocery store has a decent opportunity to get some early stuff. Bookstore, I'm not really at this early stage picking up books. Hospital, absolutely not, especially with the high zombie count and evolution factor. Mall food court makes me makes me laugh, but uh, I'd have to run out of there almost immediately, and uh, that's a, pretty much a crapshoot, kind of like the hospital. Police station, nothing useful in it. So I'm thinking garage, grocery store, or religious cemetery. Again, garage is less likely to have stuff I need immediately. I really want just a house. The residential area is what I really want, but... I mean, I think I'm going to make it either grocery store or cemetery. Let's do a grocery store far start first. If we die there, then I'm going to use religious cemetery as my backup attempt. So, all right. Uh, what starting scenario gives you this? I'm doing the fled the riots start. So anytime you pick a scenario... Uh, watch for this message here on the final screen. Uh, press forward slash to select location. Starting location currently is the bookstore. So when you bring that up, you'll have a list. Not every scenario gives you a choice. Some scenarios are hard locked into one particular location. Uh, but many of them do have options. So you can pick which one you're going to start at. Another alternative if things are too, too tough, and if I die a few times in a row, I'll switch it to a night start. Uh, that'll make things way, way easier to survive. So I'll just reset my world and set it to a night start. Uh, or I'll debug the clock forward to a night start as soon as I spawn in. One or the other. Uh, but we're going to go with the grocery start. Grocery store start. <laughs> All right. Yeah, seriously, I, I love that bike. I plan on making more of those in my streams. I mean, I made that long before I was doing any kind of metalworking of any other kind, so I was really surprised how early I was able to put that together. Um, mobility was the key, though. I was able to go find a couple of vehicles, bring them back to my safe-ish area base when the wander spawns wasn't fucking with me, and uh, able to just tear a few vehicles apart and put it together in just a couple of days of game time. So I was really, really impressed about how that, how well that worked, but, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put it together next time. One space shorter though. So <laughs> anybody curious, go check out the, uh, motor, uh, mega city motorcycle challenge and you'll see what I mean. All right. We're going to go grocery store. In we go. All right, so we are in. I do not have any starting NPCs. I turned on static NPCs just so the refugee center and bandit camps and such would have uh, something in them uh, and apartment towers, but uh, I, I've been playing without NPCs for a while now. All right, there's our starting town. Not too bad. We are in the town of Shirley, and <laughs> know how I mentioned about being on the outer edge? Nope. <laughs> Damn near dead center. This is a really, really weirdly shaped town. Why the hell is the nameplate right here? <laughs> that's that's really odd. Usually the nameplate's pretty fairly close to the center. That's not even close. Ah, whatever. It's kind of odd. Unless this is two cities mashed together and there's another nameplate hiding somewhere just off screen. It's a bit of an odd setup for the town, the way it's uh, organized. I've got a uh, area to the south with some residential. Or a little bit right there. But uh, no forest in sight. Just big open plains, which is not ideal for me. I was hoping to get a forest nearby as well. Zombie horde indicators aren't too bad, but uh, we'll see if that holds up as we move around. So buildings immediately around me. I got a big open space to the north. That's going to be tough to move through given the sight lines. If I go south, got a garage, fast food, and a scrapyard. Wow, not much. Ice cream, construction site. Uh, there's an apartment right there. I should be able to move through an apartment fairly well. I think I'm going to aim for the apartment, the hardware store, and then to try to get down into this uh, residential area. Gee, there's a cabin. I kind of like that. Depending on what's in the map area just below it or around it, but having a cabin just off by itself, just far enough to be out of reality bubble range of most of the town would be pretty nice. 
So that's the direction I'm definitely going. We're going to head south. I'll try to get into that apartment, and as I run through it, I'll grab some stuff out of the apartments if I can. See if we can manage to get into the hardware store, and we'll work our way down towards these residential buildings. And then I may just run right out the back of those, and then loop back down and try to get up to this cabin uh, quietly, and or at least from a direction where I'm not dragging things to it. Uh, I don't want to run straight to it, because that'll just drag a bunch of zombies there. So I need to take off in another direction and then loop back. So I think that's the plan. What else we got in this town? Are these bookstores? Look at that. Back-to-back -back bookstores, a landfill, and an animal pound. I was hoping that was going to be a library. There's another bookstore. So we got a few bookstores. Um, don't see any other ones. One fire station, two fire stations, a couple of gun stores. A couple of doctors or pharmacies. Kind of offset a bit. And two pharmacies. One bank. And a pump station out along the road. All right. We might have a few roads leading out. That one goes out northeast. We got a west. We might have a south. And who knows what's up north of that section. So not a bad town all in all for a four and four city start. All right. Uh, do I have a specific reason why I'm crafting a survivor duster for my outer gear? <laughs> I think I've crafted exactly one. <laughs> uh, I think my last challenge was the only time I've ever crafted the survivor duster for my outer gear. <laughs> uh, I don't remember doing it beyond that. If I have, I just play a lot of Cataclysm. But uh, no, I, I don't honestly have a particular reason for it. In that specific case, it was just pretty convenient for what I was able to craft and had materials for. I don't aim for the Survivor Duster for my outer gear in, in particular. Um, and just recently is the only time I can remember actually doing it. So it all comes down to uh, trying to talk about the clothing selection is always tough because it's always individual to the playthrough, to the items I've found, to my skill level, to the temperature I'm dealing with, to my encumbrance levels, to the protection values I need. There's so many different little Tetris jigsaw puzzles that uh, you play with when you try to pick your, your clothing um, that it's a little tough to talk about. And it changes. The balance changes as you go up in skills. You can afford more encumbrance as you raise your unarmed and your melee skills because you can offset the uh, encumbrance disadvantage with those skill advantages. So I tend to have more encumbrance as I go through the series. And I, I don't know. It's, it's just a kind of weird personal preference on some of the items I'm familiar with. So, <laughs> yeah, the vast majority is bash damage. That is correct. But the vast majority of damage that kills me is bullet to the face damage. <laughs> I can get bashed a million times and just keep going sailing along. It's the bullet to the face that tends to end most of my runs uh, when I don't end them voluntarily. <laughs> so... All right, so here's the character sheet again for anybody that's just joined in here in the last few. <laughs> uh, bullets of face damage is cut damage or pierce damage. I don't know. What does bullet damage count for? I always forget. I think it... I think it counts for cut damage. Doesn't really matter. It's either... Power armor or no power armor. So that's the, one of the things, and I, I've talked about it probably ad nauseum in other series or streams, but I, I just don't like the progression. You got choices, you got choices, you got choices, and then you either have this or you are dead. I don't like that. So I wish there was more in between uh, the, other, the protection types. I, I don't like the instant cliff of this fairly common thing is just going to kill you if you don't happen to have power armor. But... Diatribe for another time. <laughs> All right, so that is our plan. Currently, we are in the back in the dark in the... Uh, oh, we got a pretty good-sized grocery store, so... And it located us well. We're not up front in the sunlight, so we've got some options here. All right, let's look at our gear. Oh, we don't have as much as I thought we would. I thought I'd have around five, but I uh, only got three and a half. One and a half is taken by the compound bow, which we're going to wear, or we're going to wield, so... All right, the only thing we've got for weapons is a hunting knife and a sheath. And we've got our compound bow and a quiver with eight fiber arrows that I'll be scared to actually use. <laughs> so 
Uh, am I actually going to be able to craft arrows? I know I will, but I don't know when or what I'm going to need. And I'm not going to want to fire these compound, these fiber arrows. This is going to be interesting how I'm going to deal with this problem. Because I took no skills at the start and I'm a savant. It's going to take me forever to level anything up. And I'll need to get a hold of Fletcher's friend for some of them. Hmm. I guess Fab is going to be the first thing we're going to end up dealing with. Uh, so, back to our gear. So, got the compound bow. Actually, I probably ought to put that away. I'm going to be scared to use it and just pull out the hunting knife for now. Nothing else very impressive. Steel-toed boots. Uh, as always, when I run my speed movement builds, I'll be looking for uh, rollerblades. It's not losing the arrows that's the problem to breakage. It's shooting things and not being able to go back, no, go recover them. I've got such a high zombie spawn rate and a high evolution factor that I'm more fearful that I will shoot them to kill something and then have to run away and not be able to recover my arrows. That's my fear. We'll see. I mean, it might not turn out that way. And, and I'm pretty much in avoidance mode as I always am at the start. So I only try to kill things I absolutely have to that are going to mess me up. Uh... Early, we're going to rely on our feet to uh, get us out of danger. But I still think I'm probably, because of that, I'm probably still going to... Let's not wield that. Oops. Oh, I can't wear the compound? Well, that's unfortunate. Hmm. All right. I thought I was able to wear the bows, but uh, apparently not. <laughs> Putting on a compound bow would be trippy. Yeah, I can see where some bows could, some can't. Compound bow won't. No problem. Um, so we got uh, two space of, or two liters of space. We'll definitely grab those sausages, the multivitamins, and that's probably it. Give me the multi. A uh, jar of honey would be nice, but I think we're going to pass that up. And it starts. So, what do we got outside? Feral hunters. Nothing too bad. Ah, acetylene torch. <laughs> hey there, acetylene torch in the uh, or the garage just south of me. So, acetylene torch. I'm gonna make a note of that. I may not get close enough. Uh, bow sling? Yeah, we'll see if we can get around to that. Ooh, some rhubarb. But it's up front. Only problem here is any, um, shady zombies will be able to spot me here inside this place. Uh, oatmeal will be good, but it's gonna be bulky for now. We'll grab it and then toss it if we have to. And not much out that way. All right, I think we got everything we're going to get. I do have the option to try to go out the back. I would like to try to smash one of these shelves while I'm here, but I... Maybe I can smash the table? None of these items are going to be easy to smash with. And I only have eight strength, which is going to also make it hard. Hmm. Something's, oh, something's breaking in the glass down there. Is it, uh, ah, here they come. Shady Zombie already spotted me and other stuff's following it in. <laughs> ah, good old Shady Zombie's getting to see you. Love that mechanic. They're never going to fix that. All right. Uh, we don't have time to dawdle now. Let's get out of here. I'm going to try to use that chain link. All right, so this is the apartment. Nope, that's a radio station. Scrapyard, and then apartments due south of that. All right, maybe I'll try to get into that garage. Uh, I've forgotten just how fun double zombie spawns are in City Starts. 
Alright, so... Um, a lot of useless books in there. Street Sweeper... I'd like to check it, but... Uh, Stuff's a little too close. I could get some matches or lighter out of there pretty easily. And some other possible stuff. That would be a mobile meth lab with a pork pie hat. Possibly some medicine in back. A <laughs> lighter with zero charges. If I step into that space to check the main compartment, I'm going to have that guy and probably that guy both on me. Do I take the chance? I don't think I do. I've also got it, woo, I've also got it on half item spawns, so it's going to be tricky. All right, hey there, acetylene torch. Oh, we got a welder too. Oh, it's an air filter. They fooled me again. <laughs> I hate this. Air filter always looks like a welder to me. Damn you, graphics. Um, <laughs> now I'm deciding, do I run over there and take a look at the clothes? I've got a decent set of clothes, so temperature shouldn't be a problem. I've already got steel-toed boots. Um... Now nah, there's not going to be much in there that is going to be critical for me, so I can go that way to get out, though, because it's going to take me too long to throw the winch to open this door, so we should probably go that way anyway. Hey! <laughs> get out of there. Mm, mining helmet? Mining helmet wouldn't be bad. He's going to hit me. Oh, I can't wear it with my other hat. All right, screw it. All right, that's what I was hoping for. Stop running. Now how many do I have? That's a lot of zombies. <laughs> oh, these 2.0 starts are funny. I wasn't kidding about might have to restart once or twice, so we'll see. All right, next. I got big open gaps before I can get over to that apartment complex. That's going to be troublesome with my stamina already falling. So far, no shockers and no spitters right next to me. Just acid zombies. So, can I get around that corner? And what's over here? Guess we're going to find out. Yeah, got grabbed. Eight strength. Oh, we broke it. Keep moving. Hey, man hack. Oh, hi, scientist. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, that's not good. That's not good. Especially when I'm out in the open like this. Gambling hall south of me. And I think I've just got the edge of the apartment. Oh, minefield next to the apartment. Lovely. So this is the apartment building. There's a minefield directly next to it. Um, I don't know if there's a back door in the gambling hall. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, dex is used for the grab. I'm not used to actually having dex. Do, do, do. The hunter's not having any problem keeping up with me. <laughs> uh, that's quite the crowd. I don't think I can afford to uh, go into that building much as I'd like to. Stupid man hack. Alright, we're going to have to go to, sp to run mode here for a minute. Let's go in this bathroom here. No. Yay. Alright, didn't get a chance to see if there's anything in there. Let's get a few doors between me and them first. Modern Swordsman. Hmm. We're already full. Uh, I'm going to have to dump the oatmeal. It's just too bulky. 
Eh, I can't afford to take that either. Double cargo pants? Sounds fun. Let's go double cargo pants. And... Stop running. I shouldn't have been running while I was moving through here. So far, nothing's come through from the north. Uh, I think I still... Oops. Alright, now they're starting to show up. So, hardware store I was hoping to get to is just south of me. And then it's a bit of a, a jog across a big open area to get to that house over there. Um, let's switch rooms. I'm going to wait here until something shows up. And then we're going to dive out that south window. Stamina management. All right. You don't have to stay way ahead of everything. Just a few steps. And out we go. Uh, I need to go over that fence. Don't care about anything out here, but I'm hoping to get a tool I can use in here or not. Nope. Funnel and a gallon jug. Uh, nope. Not going to try to carry any of those. I think I'm going to go back out this way and go south over the fence again. Alright, pretty clear. Bunch of kids over at the basketball park. Yep. Alright, so, no problem so far, really. Took a couple of small nicks when we were uh, getting out of that garage. So, here's the next big danger point. I'm going to be out in the open again as I try to transition over to this house and then down to this group of houses. Um, let's go... I'm gonna go on the back side of this building, I think. Yep, yeah, less chance of zombies over here. Peek. Alright, pretty clear. Yeah, this is an easier spot than I thought. One whole zombie? Alright, let's get the compound bow out. Come here, zombie. Partly this is uh, this run is also an experiment to see how OP archery is. Oh, please tell me this thing's working. Look how pristine that looks. No wheels. <laughs> All right, looked good from here because these aren't completely shattered, but uh, yeah, not good. Red, 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 red. So that's why they're not charging very much. But, uh, no wheels, so it doesn't matter. Alright, this is the first house I wanted to head to, though. Uh, gonna break our way in. Hey! Oh, neoprene. Throw them on. And now I'm probably getting sighted by a few things. Nothing in the kitchen. Well, I got my multivitamins and my calcium. Ooh, a great coat. Let's see how encumbered I can get and still hit things with my bow. Oh, backpack! Leather backpack! Alright, now I don't have to wear all this extra stuff. Let's get rid of the great coat. Let's get rid of the second cargo pants. 19 torso encumbrance. Everything else looks awesome. Leather pants would be pretty good for certain things. We'll grab that. Alright, so this house is done. And 
Animal shelter. I think I'm going to stick with the plan. I'm going to try to come down diagonally, see if I can get to this house, and then work my way back across this way, and then I'll try to get these, and then I'll do the south and around, and we'll try to set up in this cabin for the moment. So, now that I've actually got some carry capacity, I can risk picking up some more things. Everything looks okay out here. I can also kill small groups of zombies that come at me. That's going to make things a little easier as well. We're at uh, kill count two. Only 9,998 to go. Whoops. I think I'm going to find that archery is still crazy overpowered. How close can this thing get? Whoops. <laughs> well, that wasn't good. I, st I still do have to aim. Oh yeah, I need to put these things on auto pickup. <laughs> uh... Alright. Um... Unload quiver. Auto pickup. Mm. Yes. Reload quiver. And what did it turn on? True, adjacent. I don't want it grabbing everything. It's been a while since I fiddled with this. I only want it to grab the things I told it to. List items within no auto pickup zone. Auto pickup safe mode. Yep, somewhat of a Z Nation homage. Faster Evolution is the timer by which zombies upgrade to the higher, more dangerous forms. So with a lower number for zombie evolution, you get much faster uh, evolution of the zombies to their more dangerous forms. So as time goes by, we're going to be seeing the nasty stuff way faster. I've got it four times faster than the normal game currently. Uh, well, I did add the rule to pick up the arrows. I'm worried it's going to pick up everything, though. Last time when I turned on auto pickup, it was scooping up every single thing I moved next to, like that just did. All I wanted to do is pick up the arrows. It's been a while since I fiddled with this. Since they changed, uh, since they changed the options. So, right now it's on everything, I assume. So I don't want that. Let's see. Remove. <laughs> Add. Um, we'll just do, uh, do, do, do. All right, I think that'll do it. So arrows on the ground, arrows picked up, other crap not picked up. All right, that's all I care about for the moment. There we go. Uh, I see a basement in that house to the right or to the left right there. I'm gonna try to work my way over to the right though and get to these houses first. I'm trying to avoid that group up to the northeast. Uh, we'll get to this house in a bit. Uh, oh, this is one of those fancy houses and it's also got a basement. <laughs> a, a leisure device. Oh, right here actually is perfect for. Um, I still don't have something I can smash with. I need to keep my eye out for something I can do a little bit of bashing with. Hey, is there a zombie? Oh. A 
Lots of shady zombies coming out of the woodwork. All right, got my arrows back. Um, another shady coming. Just gonna let him come over here. Canvas bag. They've broken a door for me, so now I can grab a 2x4. Head back up here, smash the locker, get a crowbar built, and some lockpicks. Focus is low and we're a savant, so we gained a grand total of... Where'd Fab go? 34%? <laughs> Normally at 100% uh, focus... 10 lock picks and a crowbar would get you level 1 fab. We got 34% progress. Low focus and savant status, both lowering our skill gain. Alright, I'll worry about that later. Um, don't care about any of that for now. Excuse me. Alright, let's head downstairs. Whoa! <laughs> That's rude! Come on, game! <laughs> hmm. Alright, close door. Go upstairs. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, we just nope the fuck right out of there. Don't even care what's down there at that point. If he had been just another space or two further back, I would have just shot him to death. But uh, he was a little too close. I don't want to take any hits this early. Hey there, zombie. He definitely saw me. Grab some curry, cornbread, and chicken noodle. Don't care. Oops. Nothing in there. Mmm, gallon jug of wine. Cookbook, trapper book. Pants and a firecracker. All right, what is this? Got one more house to my right. Um, ooh, survivor zombie. He might actually be worth killing. Ah, now he gets joined by his buddy. Um, hmm. Again, I can kill these things easily. I'm just worried about what else is going to show up and then make it so it's hard for me to get my arrows back. I don't like fighting in areas where I haven't scouted and I don't know what else is coming. So I think I'm going to leave them alone. We'll bring them into the room. And I'll shut the door here. We'll let them stack up on the door. And we will go back out the other way. More Zambies. Grab the strings on my way through. And as I mentioned, part of this run is a Bowser OP <laughs> homage. I wanted to set the difficulty of the game world high enough that I could uh, see what we could do with a bow with a character with fairly... Uh, he might be worth killing. I'm going to go up there anyway, so let's do that. He didn't even get a space of movement. All right, give me my arrows back. First aid kit. Ooh, we're overweight already. All right, what's going? Um, 
a gallon jug of wine's going. No, actually, toaster box of pastries is going. Now I'm wishing I'd kept that other stuff. So, first aid kit, safety glasses, PBA mask. Hmm. I don't think it's worth picking up at this point. But we'll note it just in case I can't find anything anywhere else. Back row basement. Could care less what's in here. All right, so this is the last house on this side. Nothing in it. Survivor zombie has been joined by an acid zombie. I think again we're going to... Oh, they can't see me. That's right. Uh, come here, guys. I want you to see me. Come in the house. Come on. Everybody get over here. All right, now I leave. And we'll just work our way back through the house over here. <clears throat> Acid zombie, rather not play with him. We'll go around him. All right, so those two are done. Oh man, look at this! We got a fire truck with gear right outside. Uh, let's finish taking a look at this room first, or this house. Gotta go get the uh, leisure device. Sig Mosquito with 10 rounds. Uh, I'm not going to use that. We are the Silent Sniper. No guns. Actually, always got to step into the bathtub to see if there's any items in it. Light jacket that fits. That I might take. It's going to conflict with my flannel jacket. But it'll give me a little bit more carry space. And so far, I haven't missed yet, so I'm not overly concerned about a little bit of extra encumbrance. Um, I don't have a cooking implement yet. I'd rather have a pot. More cheap wine. I think I'm going to leave it. I'm hoping I'll come across a pot. I've got... Uh, more housing I can get to if I need to. So, another pantry. I don't care about anything there. Is that a... Hey, they got a shed out back with a basement? All right, we got to go check that out. Really? You're not going to pry it open? I have my crowbar. Hmm... Interesting. What kind of basement you got? Yeah, this kind of environment, I can kill stuff pretty easy. So, this is the other advantage to the start that I picked. Here's the character sheet. So I went with, uh, as opposed to my normal runs, I went with Dex and Perception as my primary traits. So 12 Dex, 12 Perception. So that 12 Perception, you get a space of night vision per three Perception. So there's four spaces of night vision from that, plus two from the night vision trait gives me one, two, three, four, five, six spaces of night vision, which is enough for me to easily get off several shots before they even know I'm there. So I'll be able to clear roams easily. I'm already getting the feeling this build is just stupid overpowered, but, uh, we got, oh my god, I didn't even notice. <laughs> I had no idea. Well, guess what we've got? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Note, laboratory basement. <laughs> Oops. Right on the edge of town where I like it. <laughs> Oh man, I'm just trying to think through. We could uh, we could do quite a bit of damage in a library or a laboratory because we can kill the uh, turrets easily with our bow, um, and pretty much all of the other zombies, everything. 
especially with the high night vision. I could basically dive bomb this guy down to the finale room and do the finale room with little problem. As long as I didn't get shot in the face as soon as I opened the door, this guy right now could go clear a finale room without any difficulty. So, huh. Uh, bows when you know the game, yeah. That's kind of what I'm demonstrating here. Part of this playthrough is a demonstration of bows and how silly they can get. <laughs> and this is just, I mean, this is starting out effectiveness, so... Uh, I mean, there's nothing OP about the character and the way he's built. He's built using the multi-pool, just the bow hunter. And, uh, I mean, the only trade I took was I put my spare points into archery to get archery 6 at the start. But, uh, dex and perception. I'm gonna see just how much encumbrance I can load up and still be hitting everything. We have yet to miss. I haven't missed a single time yet. But they've all been fairly close range shots. Uh, but we got a laboratory basement, so that's good. This would actually be a good early base. Especially if I can run out into the field and get me an ID card, because you can see there's light in here. Uh, that might go away when the turret goes down, though. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so this is an opportunity. Let's head back up. Laboratory basement out in the shed. <laughs> That's funny. Don't care, don't care. Whoops. I'm out in the car park. <laughs> There's zombies out here. No wheels on the um, Humvee. i got to remember I've got that uh, fire truck with all that gear sitting right there. Let's go ahead and grab the screwdriver set. And we got stuff following us. There's the pot I was expecting. Now I do have to start deciding. Um, let's dump the entertainment device and the gallon jug. Those are less important for now. Alright, um, I think we're done in this house, except for that basement, so... Mark that one off. I'm gonna go try to check out the fire truck, and then see if I can make it to those other houses. Looks like I do have a clear run out this way, or down the street, so... With my movement advantages, I don't think I'll have a problem there. Just... Don't want to meet Shock, or... Uh, acid actually wouldn't be too dangerous for this guy. Uh... Diesel, battery, just no wheels. It's in really good shape otherwise. Alright, let's go see what they've got for me in the fire truck while I've got time. Okay, turnout gear, lots of it. Firefighter helmets. I don't think I can wear anything with this hunter's cap. What is this thing? Three, three is pretty good. Two environment. 50 warmth. Youch. Why am I not over, over... Over warm? No. 11 degrees from being there. So yeah, I can't wear the helmet. Uh, I'm debating going to the turnout boots. Lots of encumbrance on those things. None of this stuff is fitted either, which kind of sucks. I'll probably just leave it all here. Um, actually, I can wear the hood. Let's take the hood. No, nah, that's going to make me too warm. Actually, no, it won't. So, yeah, we'll wear the hood. We'll leave the rest. Here come the zombies. Come on, just let me see what's here first. And pretty much more the same. There is a suit, unfitted. Um, let's throw the suit on as well. And I got hit. They're concentrating their damage. <laughs> Going for my legs. Alright, so we got a few zombies out here. I could probably kill these and get my arrows back. But I think I just want to keep moving. Oops, I didn't actually check to see if that was drivable. That, that would be funny. Uh, no wheels. Not bad otherwise, but no wheels. Alright, let's check the solar vehicle. Full storage battery. It's got the motor. Security system's broke. It's drivable. Oh, it's perfect condition motor. It's a really good drivable vehicle. Trunks are a bit messed up. Solar panel's gone. 
The other ones are pretty damaged, but uh, I'm going to get the zombies away from this, and then we're going to drive this out along the road to that uh, southern area. So let's go visit this house real quick, and then we'll come out and we'll leave via the solar vehicle. So I want to drive or drag these guys away from the vehicle. So hey there, survivor zombie. All right, follow me, everybody. Come on. Hey, everybody, follow me. Into the house we go. Whoops, that's not a door. Actually, we'll go out the northern one. Why is my crowbar not doing what it's supposed to do? <laughs> there it goes. I was trying to examine by habit instead of uh, just moving into it. All right, so another zombie over there. Let's just go outside here. And that worked perfectly. I think I'll do this house, this house, hit the vehicle, we'll drive out this way, circle around and check the cabin, and then make some decisions. So let's go over this way. Cockroach house. Well, there's a meat source. I'm going to leave the cockroaches alone. Might come back for them later for the meat. Jeez, that's a third gallon jug of cheap wine they've pushed in front of me. Ammonia disinfectant. All right, so we've got a first aid kit and we've got disinfectant. We don't have antibiotics yet. So we're missing antibiotics to finish up our early game medical supplies. Oh, bowler hat. Exciting. Oh, fitted leather jacket. How many jackets do I want to wear at once? Got to take the leather jacket. More disinfectants. All right, so we're not going to get infected. Um, eh, I should have left him alone. Right, let's go out the window. Yeah, we're done in this house. No zombies out back. That's good. Oh, survivor zombie off on his own. All right, you need to die. Let's get some range and see how often I hit. So he is 10 away, and we got 32 max range. More range, please. All right. 18 away. That's a pretty good shot. Let's do a... What kind of numbers are we getting? So on precise, we've got, what, 68% chance of a hit and 17% of a graze? All right, let's try that. So hit for 48. Hit for 34. And dead he is. Marksmanship has gone up to one. Oh, that's what I forgot to take. I should have taken at least a point or two in marksmanship. <laughs> Although with a 10k challenge, I think we won't have a problem there. Uh, nothing else really interesting.